Oh, I see some friendly faces popping in. Mm -hmm. Mr. Shen, how you doing today? Are you gonna smile for me today? There you go. All right, I like that. Let's see who else is in here. I don't like teams that much. You can't see that much. There's this. Yeah. Um, I don't see. So we are going to ask you as you're entering the meeting, if you will please mute yourself so that we can keep down the background noise. And we are going to get started here in a few minutes as soon as we get everyone in from the lobby. Chris, don't you have any music you can play? Um, I'm afraid not. Elevator music while we're <laughs> I, I could offer to sing, but you don't want to hear that either, so. No, no. I mean, it's April Fool's Day. I guess we could, you know, try some kind of prank, but. I've heard enough April Fool's jokes today. You know, I haven't actually heard one, if you can believe that. Uh, I heard one that somebody had actually filed late to run against me, and I thought that was a great one. I didn't Enough. find it. Georgia now faces at least three legal challenges. Mm -hmm. De depending on who it was that they threatened you with, that could be probably a pretty good joke. I think it was a promise. I don't think it was a threat. Oh. It was a friend of mine. I'm like, yeah, thanks, buddy. You've been done. He thought it was hilarious. Okay, well, it looks like our lobby traffic is slowing down a little bit. So if you would like to open up the meeting officially, I will let you take it we over. Are, we are recording. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, is that Ryan? Is yes, that it is. Right. I, I was actually speaking a little bit earlier, did not realize I was muted on Teams. And uh, I was like, huh, I wonder if they can hear me. And then turns out that was the case. So, yep, we are yeah. recording. So good to go. All right, then three, two, one, let's begin. Um, my name is David Blewett. I am Dallas City Councilman District 14, which includes the area, obviously, that we're going to talk about tonight on Richmond Avenue between Abrams and Matilda. I think just about everybody on this call should know that. I assume most, if not all of you, have been at previous meetings, and so I thank you for coming here tonight. We are joined by City Engineer Chris Turner Notware. Say hi, Chris. Hello, everyone. And I believe uh, Dr. Robert Perez, Director of Public Works, is on the call, too. Hey, good evening, everyone. I'll let you guys introduce the rest of the staff. I don't know who else is here, but Chris will be, our city engineer, will be leading the specifics. I think you guys have, have uh, listened to her presentations before, so it should be very thorough, and uh, we'll get a good presentation. My setup piece is real simple. Um, this third community meeting was important to me because we went through the process of five different options, narrowed it down to two. We had a lot of input from a lot of you. The last two options that we got down to, um, in my mind, left, left things um, not quite buttoned up the way that I would like. You know, my job is to represent all of you. My job is to represent the residents and neighbors that make up District 14, and I try very hard to do that. This project, as most of you know, is problematic in that the width of 44 feet meant that no matter what we did, something had to give. I decided, and I went public on this a month or so ago, that the number one consideration is safety, and that is safety for drivers, safety for bicyclists, safety for pedestrians. And, and some of you may know, I live in the area. My kids actually try to get from my house across Richmond to the Lakewood Shopping Center. So I know Alderson, I know Richmond, I know the speed, and I know the traffic. So that's very important. The next two things to think about were parking for the residents that live on the street versus protected bike lanes. So when I looked at the last two options and I talked to a bunch of constituents and I looked at the survey results, it was not as clear as some people would think that it, that it might be on what the best option was. And so working with city staff, 
we tried to come up with a hybrid model that used the best elements of those other two options and give us slowed lanes. I do want parking on both sides. And I did want a protected bike line, at least one if I couldn't have two. I did not want to just have bike lanes just to put in bike lanes, just to put in paint. I have been convinced by people in the biking community about the importance of a truly protected bike lane. And I'm intrigued by this. I'm intrigued by the idea of seeing if it can connect Abrams to Skillman to Greenville in these neighborhoods and get people to use them. I want people to use these lanes. I don't want to put down paint and just look at empty bike lanes. So I want to see if this is going to work. The hybrid is considered a pilot by the engineer and by the public works staff. Um, and if you guys are open to it, I can support it. And I think it's a good ad for the neighborhood. Having said that, I will let Chris go through the presentation to bring you up to speed on the first two options on the survey results and this hybrid model. And then we'll be taking questions and seeing if you guys can see what we're trying to do here, which is we are trying to cram as much into this as possible, as much, as much good as we can get out of it, knowing that there's no perfect. So again, thank you for being here. I appreciate the opportunity to do this and get some buy-in from you guys, because that's my job. Chris, please go. Thank you, Councilman. Um, I'm going to turn my camera off because I sometimes have bandwidth issues and I don't want to get knocked off the call. Um, with that, I do want to introduce the rest of my city staff or our city staff that is here. So first of all, um, Haitham Hassan is my one of my assistant city engineers and he is here working with me tonight. He's actually the one running my presentation. Um, we actually we also have Dia Tomi here, who's the project manager for the project. Um, we have Ryan Wagner here, who is our PIO from Public Works. We also have transportation staff here. We have Catherine Rush, who's the chief planner. And we have Jessica Scott, who is the bicycle coordinator. And I don't believe I have missed any city staff, but if I have, please speak up now and let me know. Okay, so if we'll go on to the next slide, Hytham. So I do want to let you all know that we are um, recording this both audio and video and the basic reason is so that we have the um, record of um, the meeting for the future now instead of a sign-in sheet we do use um, the participant list for our sign-in sheet so unfortunately if you have only called into the meeting we do not have your name we only have the last four numbers of your phone number so what I'm going to ask Ryan to do right now is to go through the few folks that we only have their phone number and ask them to please state for the record their phone number, last four digits, and their names so that we can get that on the record. So Ryan, if you'd please go through those few phone numbers for us right now. Will do. Um, at the top of the list, I see a phone number, last four digits, 0045. If you could go ahead and unmute with uh, hitting star six and say your name for the record. Greg Homan. Thank you, Greg. Uh, up next, we have a 3950. Go ahead and unmute and state your name for the record. Mary. McCoy. Sorry, I missed that last part. Mary, uh, what was that? McCoy. McCoy. Thank you, Mary. Uh, next, I see a 1208. 1208, if you go ahead, unmute and state your name for the record. All right, and then finally we have a 1390, if you could go ahead and unmute and state your name. That's again star six. Monique Jeanette. And I think we have all of our phone numbers covered. OK, thank you. I am going to ask everyone if in this meeting, if you will please hold your comments until the end. But you can please submit questions and comments via the chat box. The questions will be reviewed by our team and a response will be prepared for the end of the presentation. Um, if we do require a detailed response, um, we will prepare that and post it to the project website. Um, if you have called into the meeting and wish to submit questions or comments, you can email Dia or Ryan 
or we will give you an opportunity at the end of the meeting to unmute yourself and ask your question. I do want to note that we're going to be limiting people's time to approximately a minute so that we can try and get through everyone um, that may want to have input on the meeting. So please have some patience with that. Okay, so tonight we're going to talk with you about the project information for the Richmond project. We'll talk about the feedback from the March 2nd public meeting that we had. We'll talk about that hybrid cross section that Councilman Blewett brought up. We'll talk about the other project elements that we're going to be installing, the bicycle facility transition at Richmond, the next steps for the project, and then we'll review the contact information for the project as well. So the location for the project is on Richmond between Abrams and Matilda Street. So you can see that on the screen. And as we've mentioned before, the approximate average daily traffic on Richmond is about 6,000 vehicles a day. This is a 2017 bond project and it was intended to provide a pavement overlay on Richmond from Matilda to Abrams at approximate cost of $1.275 million. The project was intended to include bicycle lanes, physical bump outs at designated street crossings, enhanced painted crosswalks, and new flashing beacons at selected crosswalks, dependent upon the funding and approval guidelines. The Richmond and Skillman intersection is also going to be reconstructed to remove the channelized right turn lanes and install the new traffic signal at a cost of about $350,000. So at our last public meeting on March 2nd, we did put out a survey to the citizens and we asked a series of questions. The first question was, did you attend or did you view the video of the public meeting from October 29th? The second question was, did you attend or view the video of the public meeting for March 2nd? We asked you what your connection was with Richmond Avenue. We had two roadway options, option A or B, and we asked which option you preferred. And then we asked if option B was the section that was chosen for the roadway, which side of the street would you like to have parking? And we asked you to provide any other comments. We had 241 responses on the feedback or on the survey, and we did not appear to have any duplicates. That didn't appear to be an issue with this survey like it was the last time. So starting to review the actual feedback, looking at the first two questions, as far as did you attend or watch the video of the public meeting on October 29th? Out of those 241 respondents, 85 did attend or watch the video from October 29th. And the same question regarding the March 2nd meeting, um, 117 folks did attend or watch the video of that March 2nd meeting. As far as what your connection is with Richmond, the options that folks had to respond on that question was either you lived on Richmond, you worked within two blocks of Richmond, lived within two blocks of Richmond, commuted using Richmond or visit businesses along Richmond, or you had an option of other. So 56.85% of folks indicated that they did live on Richmond and another 12.45% indicated they lived within two blocks of Richmond. So similar to the last survey, this constituted 69.3% of the respondents, which indicated that we're receiving feedback from the audience that we are hoping to reach, which are those who are going to be most impacted on a daily basis by the project. And then looking at the other respondents, we had about 10.37% that visit the businesses and 9.13% utilize it to commute. And then the other comments, we had 11.2% and they provided answers such as visiting friends and family along Richmond or biking along Richmond. So we presented two refined improvement options. Option A basically had protected street parking on both sides with shared bike lanes. And then option B had one side parallel parking and designated bike lanes, which were not parking protected. So just to kind of give one more look at those. Option A is essentially two shared um, bike lanes with the parking lanes. And then option B had the one side parallel parking and buffered bike lanes that were not parking protected, but it did provide two um, protected parking lanes. Or excuse me, two protected bike lanes, I'm so sorry. 
So looking at the public information feedback on options A and B, of the 241 respondents, 97 or 40.25% voted for option A, which was basically the two-sided parking, and 144 or 59.75% voted for option B, which had the protected bike lanes, not parking protected, but one side parallel parking. And then for the next question, as far as if option B was selected, if folks wanted parking on the north or south side, it was almost split right down the middle um, with 118 for the north and 123 for the south. And then looking at if folks wanted additional, to provide us additional comments, we did have 131 respondents that provided comments. About 47 of those responses did have some type of a comment regarding speed and speeding, traffic calming, wanting speed humps, bumps or tables, and just basically needing to slow down traffic. We did have 61 folks that made comments on the cross sections related to parking and or bike lanes, and approximately half of those expressed a desire for on-street parking on both sides. However, many folks expressed a desire for an option that combined on-street parking with a protected bike lane. So what that led us to was this hybrid cross-section that includes parallel parking on both sides of the roadway. It includes one shared bike lane and one designated bike lane, which is parking protected. So as the councilman mentioned, this cross section combines the best of both of the other options to address the need for parking with the need for a dedicated bicycle facility and a roadway with limited width. So we're going to show that hybrid cross section. So what we have proposed are again parking on both sides, seven and a half foot parking lanes. We're proposing two ten and a half foot travel lanes with one of those being shared for um, bicyclists. We do have a five foot bike lane against the curb, so it is parking protected, meaning that the parking is between the bike lane and the travel lane. And we do have a three foot buffer between that bike lane and the parking lane. So this is the proposed hybrid that essentially we take the parking on both sides. We provide a protected bike lane and we provide a shared bike lane. So as I said, and as the councilman said, we're taking the best of both options and putting them together to provide the best, safest option that we can within the limited right away and the limited space that we have. So again, the other project elements that we've talked about putting in the project are the rec rectangular rapid flashing beacons, which are the directional high intensity lights that are visible at all hours. And these are only activated when someone is looking to cross at that particular location. So they don't flash at all hours. They only flash when someone wants to cross at that specific location. We're proposing speed tables, which are flat top speed humps that cover the entire width of the roadway. And they become a raised crosswalk when we put the crosswalk markings on them. And we have curb bump outs, which is a traffic calming measure, which widens the, sh the sidewalk for a short distance and it'll reduce the crossing distance and allow pedestrians and drivers to see each other when parked vehicles otherwise block that visibility. And I do want to note that we are planning to put in concrete bump outs. I just did not have a chance to change the graphic on this, so I do realize this shows a rubber bump out, but we are planning to put concrete in. So I wanted to make sure everyone is aware of that. So looking at where we're planning to put these project elements, if you go from east to west on this map, we are looking at bump outs at Kidwell Street, Alders Alderson Street, Empire Drive, the north side, Cecile Street, Concho Street, and Matilda. We are looking at putting speed tables at Alderman and Empire on the south leg. And we are looking at an RRFB at Del Mar. I do want to note we've received quite a few comments um, regarding stop signs and the possibility of four way stops. So we are planning to work with our transportation department to institute some of those traffic studies that have been on hold for a while. So we will be looking at that um, in particular um, at Concho and, and Del Mar and working with our transportation department on that. 
So that will be forthcoming as well. So looking at the bicycle facility at transition at Abrams. Basically, I do want to note that if you look at the Richmond side of this intersection, this cross section will not exactly match what we just showed you on the hybrid. It's not showing the parking because basically the parking will not be this close to the intersection. We need to have a specific distance away from the intersection where we're not going to be showing parking or we won't have parking. What we have just finished constructing or we're in the midst of, I'm sorry, I wasn't quite done with that one. Um, what we're in the midst of finishing on the south side of Abrams is we have a two way bike facility on the west side of Abrams. So anyone coming up to Richmond will be able to utilize that facility um, on the south leg of Abrams there. We also have a shared use path on the north side of Abrams. So that's why on that northwest corner you see bike route signs. So folks can go north on that shared use path on the north side. And then they'll also be able to continue on Richmond. They can also continue on Abrams on that bike facility. But I just want to note that folks um, will have to use the crosswalks to get through the Richmond intersection if they basically want to go um, continue east on Richmond. But that is how we will transition bicycles at Abrams. And go to the next slide, Hytham, please. The Richmond Skillman intersection, um, looking both east and looking west, we have the free flow right turn lanes that you can see in that upper left picture. There's um, a suburban um, looks like it's turning right there. We are looking to eliminate these free flow right turn lanes because basically they're not safe for. Pedestrians. As as a folk, as a person is driving up and making this right turn lane, they're really focusing more on the traffic that is on Skillman and making their right turn than if a pedestrian is actually in front of them. So if, because one of the purposes of this project is to improve the pedestrian safety, we are going to be taking out these free flow right turn lanes. So you can go to the next one, Hytham, please. So the Richmond Skillman intersection, we're eliminating the free right turn lanes. We're installing new barrier free ramps, so essentially ADA ramps so that folks will be able to access all four corners of the intersection. We're installing a new traffic signal. We will have one through lane in each direction on Richmond, and there will be a bicycle lane that we carry through. So our next steps will be spending April and May finalizing the design, and the plan is to start construction in June of 2021, and the construction time will be approximately 12 months. Now, since we just came up with the hybrid cross section and finalized that um, this week, basically that's why we need the next couple of months to finish and finalize that design to ensure that as we're working on the bump outs and things like that, that we appropriately address drainage and that we appropriately address where the bicycle facility needs to be. Um, right now, we are leaning towards putting it on the south side of the roadway, basically because that side of the roadway has less driveways and it appears that it will have less drainage impacts. But that is what we need to work out over the next several months, which is why we're delaying the start of the construction of the project from what we originally told you when we were here meeting with you um, on March 2nd. So as far as contact information, I mentioned Dia Tomi is the project manager. Um, Ryan Wagner is our public relations coordinator and I'm the city engineer, so our email addresses are here. And there is also the project website for Richmond. We have been working with our um, public affairs office to try and keep this specific website updated, updated with all of the various information from the three public meetings and things of that nature, but we've been having some technical difficulties. So we're trying to make sure that that blog website gets updated. And with that, we will open it up for questions. Okay, okay. Uh, I, will uh, I will go, go ahead, ahead and, and start, start moving down the list this. of uh, folks uh, I see, I see in the meeting. Please, please do keep in mind we're trying to be respectful as much as we can of everyone's time. Uh, so try to limit yourself. Like you said, we're going to be trying to limit it folks to um, at least a minute on their responses. And then moving forward, we'll have to move on to uh, other people in the meeting. And once again, we highly encourage if we're not able to get to you during the meeting and you still have questions, comments, concerns, 
uh, Hytham, if you would go ahead and put our contact information back up on the screen. Please uh, email them to us and we will try to address them in as timely a fashion as we possibly can. Um, that being said, um, I do see that we have two hands raised uh, and I'll go ahead or three there and I'll go ahead and address those hands raised first, but please keep in mind once I've we've you made your comments or asked your questions, we will have to move on to other folks. So any additional hand raising past that point, we will have to ignore you and move uh, forward. So going first, uh, I see uh, Travis Richards, if you would go ahead and unmute. Uh, thank you. So uh, this is a question for Councilman Blewett and then also for Chris. Uh, Councilman, in your in our correspondence, you mentioned a few times and also on social media, your vision for the neighborhood. And uh, with the volume of traffic on Richmond being so high, 6,100 vehicles per day, uh, my question is, with respect to your vision for the neighborhood, where do you foresee all of these cars going and can you provide us a little bit of a uh, warm fuzzy that the plan is not to uh, have all of them come back to Richmond whenever the construction is over. So I just kind of want to know where the traffic is going to go and how uh, and, and how that ties in to your vision for the neighborhood council. Yeah, Travis, I appreciate that question and, and I kind of cringe a little bit hearing the idea that it's my vision because this road, you know, it's decades in the making of when it got widened and what it was planned for. And now we're trying to recapture it and make it more of a neighborhood street. And it is a problem. 6,000 cars are not just going to evaporate. But um, honestly, I think that's a better question for the city engineer than it is for me on how we will be directing traffic. But my intention is whether it's stop signs, speed tables, these concrete bump outs. I've had numerous conversations with numerous people on this call about the effectiveness of narrowing lanes and slowing traffic down. And I have been convinced that it is an effective measure and that's what we're trying to do here. So um, there will be lots of, of things put into this to slow it down. Um, I don't know, Robert, Chris, if you guys want to talk about your, your where you think the cars are going to divert to, but um, I don't, my vision, I can use that word after all, I would envision and hope that it's not 6,000 cars on this road going forward. I don't have a number of what it should be, but it should not be 6,000. Chris, you want to talk about it? Sure. Um, basically, as, as the councilman said, we have worked hard to look at narrowing the lanes to slow the traffic. We are planning on putting in the curb bump outs and the speed tables, which will also slow the traffic. And we do anticipate that this will likely have the effect of diverting some of the traffic off of Richmond. There are other roadways in the area that provide um, east-west access, um, whether that be, and, and I am so sorry that the names are escaping me at the moment. Um, Belmont. Thank you. <laughs> you know, Bel Belmont, some of those, some of those other uh, collectors in the area we expect will get used. Um, but either way, the, the main effort of what we're trying to do is slow that traffic down. And I think that's going to happen either way. So even if we do still have, you know, 4,000 vehicles per day on the roadway, they're going to be going significantly slower. All right. Uh, thank you, Travis, for that uh, question. Next, we're moving on to uh, Randy String. If you go ahead and unmute. Um, first, I want to thank Councilman Blower for all of his work on this and also for the compromise. But I do want to state this. I've lived in Richmond since 1962. And just because the city made a mistake in 1972 and took the property and the trees out from the parkway, which was never built, and the city reversed the decision in 1975, I think you need to look at this more as a residential street. That's what that's what it's started at. That's what it's designated at, and that's what it was originally, just like Belmont and Orem and Prosper. You had planes on uh, painted, like like Councilman Lewis said, just paint on uh, on Belmont, and no one used it that much. So I'm looking at Greenville Avenue, where the city spent some time to really slow down traffic and provide parking. 
You can't race through Lower Rainbow anymore. And there's plenty of park. So I think a little bump outs, unless there's what we have on Green Avenue, you're not going to protect the cars and you're not going to sit down. I've lived in that street for a long time. It's not only the safety, it's the noise and the congestion. So whatever compromise you come up with, one thing I'm very adamant about, and I don't understand, is why you're taking out the right turn lanes at Skillman. It's not a safe intersection. You're not at turn lanes like you have on Abram. And all you do is back up traffic even more. I go down that street, and without any changes right now, I can sit at that traffic light for three traffic signal changes before I can get to the right lane with the current cutout. So to keep traffic moving and things, I really wish that you would reconsider at a minimum not taking out turn lanes. You can put up, you can still do the access for ADA on those cutouts. You can still put, you know, brightly painted uh, crosswalks and you can put up signs there. But to just say, well, we don't need it because we want to protect pedestrians. There are more and more people walking in the neighborhood and they walk their dogs and stuff, but you need to look at the traffic of people that live on that street and the impact of taking those ones out. So I have a councilman uh, speak to this, or Ryan, or, or uh, Diane. You know, we still really look at this and really work hard to make it safe for the bicycles, the pedestrians, the cars that are parked there, and the people in Richmond. I really don't care about the commuters. If you want to know why, because Abrams is wide, Skillman is wide. La Vista's wide. Those were the original streets that everybody commuted on. Abrams wide goes down to Columbia. So, hey Randy, Randy, like, I'm going to have to ask you to limit yourself. You're over about a minute and a half at this point. So we, we would like to potentially move on to other commenters. So if you could wrap up your thoughts. Yeah, I, I just think there's plenty of other ways that people can get around that are commuting and not have to go down a residential street and make Richmond more residential street. For the neighborhood. Thank you. And the, thank, thank you for those comments, Randy. And I, I will address as far as the Skillman um, intersection, what we are committed to doing is looking at the signal timing in the morning and the afternoon peaks. And we will look at that and we will make adjustments to signal timing as needed to make sure traffic is flowing through that intersection um, and address that um, after the construction um, once this is done. Okay, uh, thank you for your comments, Randy. Uh, up next, I see uh, Melanie Van Landingham has uh, her actually, hand raised. Ran, I'd like to, Brian. Oh, Brian sorry about that. Yes, question. yeah. No, um, just real quick, Randy. I, I appreciate your question and, and questions, and I can tell you that I also had conversations about that free right turn because I'm concerned about traffic backing up. So we have discussed this with the engineer, uh, with Public Works. They've given me. You know, from a traffic movement perspective, an answer that while I don't love it, it, it is an effective answer about the need to slow it down. And and we just don't have a lot of width, by the way. We don't have 44 feet at the intersections there. So this is a this is a compromise trying to do the best we can. And I am very much trying to think of this as a neighborhood street. I very much want it slowed down and more pedestrian oriented. And in terms of diversion, you know, yeah, I, I don't really like to name specific streets because all the streets are getting cut through traffic, all of them. My street on Vickery is a dead end at a park and people still fly down my street. And I just can't believe they're that ignorant that you're running into a park. But it's it's an ongoing problem. We're trying to make it better, slow it down, make it more residential and safe. Um, and we did talk about those right turn lanes. Uh, like I said, I don't love it, but the engineers did address it. All right, thank you, Councilmember Blewett. Uh, OK, go ahead, Melanie. Melanie, you may not be unmuted. Yeah, I see that you're unmuted on Teams, but you might be having a mic issues there.
Hey, Ryan, let's come back to Melody or Melanie. Gotcha. Excuse me. Uh, Melanie, if it doesn't, if it's still not working, try leaving the meeting and rejoining. And sometimes we've we've had success with that. Uh, but we'll come back to you after the next person. Uh, so moving on, I see Sherry's hand raised. Hi, thank you. Um, I wanted to say first, I do really appreciate the hybrid option um, versus the other two. So thank you. I, I, I personally uh, like that one of the options the best. Um, my question, though, is mainly probably for Chris, the engineer. Um, uh, I see the value in in the um, the new option. Um, I'm less concerned about the peak hours. And I have a question for you about the slow traffic hours. Um, and here's why. Um, I may be the only per I hope I'm the only person this happened to. But um, I work from home and I worked from home before COVID. So in September 2018, I was working from home and at noon on a Monday with no traffic and there was only one car on the street. A Dallas uh, water utility truck, which is basically a tank, if you've ever seen them, um, uh, was coming um, east from Abrams to Skillman. I'm on the 6100 block. And uh, he told the police that um, he got distracted, whatever that means, and um, uh, he managed to lose control and he hit the one car that was on the street at noon, tried to recorrect, went over my neighbor's yard, up my driveway, hit my parked car, and threw it all the way through my fence and totaled my car. And I commuted to Irving for 10 years, which is a very dangerous route every day, two hours, and always thought I'd have an accident, but my car was totaled while sitting still in my driveway while I was inside. And the city did that. So my, my question is, um, while I like this setup, um, and it seems like it'd be great on a Saturday or Sunday or morning or afternoon. When you're talking about a situation like that, and there aren't, you know, all the cars are left for the day, or there's only a few and there's no bikers, how will the bump outs and all that really slow down somebody who's the only person on the road? That's kind of my question, because I personally had that situation happen, which is unbelievable. And the, the fire, the firemen were completely floored. The guy barely missed my house. Um, he, he, you know, hit my car. He could have gone through the front of my house. So, uh, Chris, can you just kind of explain how the, the bump outs and the stuff on the road would slow down somebody in a situation like that? Sure. Um, Sherry, I mean, I'm sorry. It sounds like it's a complete freak accident that. Well, you know, it is, never... it is. As, as all the neighbors on this call will tell you, we've been waiting for something to happen. It was just I was the one that that had the, the short straw that day. <laughs> it was bound to happen. And yeah. usually we thought it would be a drunk driver at 2 a.m., but it was a city worker at noon on a Monday. So that's just my question. Without stop signs and stuff, what do you do? Well, basically, that's that's part of the reason. One of the main reasons we're putting the speed tables in. We have the two speed tables that we're proposing um, at in the east end of the project. And we do have the flashing beacon that we're proposing um, towards the west end of the project. And then the other things with the curb bump outs, um, as folks are in, are coming up to these intersections, it is physically going to narrow the road at those intersections. So when po folks are approaching those intersections, there are only, are only going to be 10 and a half feet lanes for them to travel in at those intersections. So looking at your picture right now, does that mean, is that what those like half circles are on the end? They're narrowing the road. Is that what that is? Yeah, those those half circles on the end. And let me let me see if I can do this. Because I understand that explanation if, if that's the answer. Yeah, I think, can you let me have control for one second so I can show my cursor here or or can you do it for me? C can you point out what the concrete bump outs are exactly that those? All right, that is them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, those those are the concrete bump outs. So when you're coming up to those intersections where we have those, essentially there will be concrete there so that folks have to stay within those travel lanes when you come to the intersection. Which is why then the bike has its own lane, so it, it doesn't have to, it doesn't go, uh, it, it doesn't have to deal with the bump out. It just goes right through, correct? Correct, correct. Okay. Well, that's the Oh, sure. 
So looking at this design, I mean, talking to the engineers, they didn't want to do more than eight foot, I think maybe nine foot max concrete bump outs. Chris, is that right? Correct. So by doing it on the left side, you have a standard bump out. And then if you look at the right, because you have that cut through for the bike lane, you're able to create a concrete bump out that fits within their safety parameters. If you did not have the bike lane there, the concrete bump outs would have to be moved further to the right and you wouldn't be able to squeeze the lanes down to 10 and a half. You might be able to squeeze them down to 12-ish, something like that, I don't have it in front of me. So this was a way of using concrete as you know, a number of you on this call have Melanie, David, you guys have talked about it for a long time. That narrowing lanes slows traffic, and we tried very hard to do that. No, uh, thank you for that. That ex that's the explanation of how it would slow it down in a nobody's on the road, there's no cars on the road situation. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Sherry. Thank um, you. And uh, Maria, I see you next on the list, but we're going to go ahead to try Melanie again if you want to unmute and see if that fixed audio situation. Can you hear me? Yes, yes there we go. All right. I appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, I do. I do appreciate the the, the consideration of the concrete uh, bump outs because they do. They also are very effective in making the the, the crosswalks more uh, or shorter, and uh, that helps people cross the street. So the, the pedestrian crossing at Richmond is a lot safer. Um, just a few questions. I'll just ask them and then I'll let you guys answer. Uh, why not look at speed tables on the west end? Um, and why not extend to Greenville or will that be extended once the new development is completed? Um, will there be left turn signals at the Skillman intersection? And looking a little bit, uh, further afield, but affecting this project, the uh, the free wreck turn at Richmond and Gaston is also a, um, a significant contributor to the speeds on Richmond with the uh, folks not slowing down at the, the turn from Gaston. Uh, I know Gaston study is, is looking at Gaston itself, so um, I hope there'll be some support to take out the free right turn and just make that a standard T intersection and, and just let, you know, they could still have a right turn lane there, but um, it just wouldn't be a free right turn. And then the radius at the southeast corner of Abrams for the, the bus traffic turning, uh, cutting that corner, if you guys could take a look at that, it may be happening uh, a little bit later as well with the Abrams work, but um, those all affect the, the access and accessibility along all along Richmond. So I'll get off and let you answer the questions. If I need to repeat anything, let me know. Thank you. OK, um, I'm kind of going to go from bottom to top and I'm going to ask Haitham or Dia if they will answer the question about if we're putting in left turn signals at Skillman. Yes, we are. We are putting left turn signals at Skillman. OK. And as far as the extension to Greenville, um, it, it was not put in as part of the project. It was not programmed as part of the project and thus it wasn't budgeted as part of the project. And I can't tell you why, Melanie, because I wasn't here when the project was programmed. But I do know we have that huge apartment complex that's going in on the southeast corner of Greenville and Richmond right now. And I do believe that there will be some improvements on the roadway as part of that project that should take care of some of those issues um, leading up to Greenville there. Chris, let me talk for 10 seconds on that. Absolutely, sir. This, that project was a buy right project. It didn't come through CPC, well, not, not for zoning, but um, for up zoning, and didn't come to council for a vote. That was a replat, it happened before I got here. Um, I do have a relationship with the developer, Nick Wilhelmson, and I've reached out to him to see, it'd have to be voluntary, we can't make him do it, but I'm telling him that we're trying to get to Matilda and he's got about half of that block after that. And if he is understanding what we're trying to do, maybe he'll put in a wider sidewalk. I think it's six feet. Maybe we can find 10 feet. Maybe we can get him to do something that will integrate better that last block. I think that would be a great addition. 
OK, and then regarding speed tables at the west end of the project, um, we originally were considering a speed table at. Let me get my my intersection correct here. Um, we were originally considering a speed table at Del Mar. And as we looked at the engineering on it, it has seemed more appropriate to just have an RRFB there. So as I mentioned, we are going to work with the transportation department on some potential um, four way stops and look at that west end of the project a little bit closer there and see if there's anything else that can um, be more appropriate for that west end of the project other than just that RRFB. And as I mentioned, we do have all the, the you know, the curb bump outs as well that we're doing in that area. And as far as the Richmond Gaston, Melanie, I'd like to address, I, I don't want to get Richmond and Gaston kind of tied up in this project because there's, as we've discussed, we can't do much with Gaston at this point in time. It's not part of the scope of this project. And, you know, we, we can talk about that in terms of a future bond program potentially. And the southeast corner of Abrams, um, again, Hythe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe that we're modifying that as part of the Abrams project. It just doesn't function for a bus turning there. And when we were out in the field, I believe we had a pretty good discussion about that and the fact of the utilities and the, and the things that are on that corner specifically that would have to be relocated to make that more functional. What I'll just throw out a quick idea, and that is the the, uh, the bus traffic uses that one block just to get around essentially your Whole Foods to to make their loop in their route. It could go around the other way, uh, uh, Councilman. If you take a look at that, if they rather than use Abrams, they could use gas and then turn left, and they would make be able to make that turn uh, easier. It would just be safer for pedestrians standing on that corner. So just something. Yeah, Millie, like. Millie, I totally agree with you on that. I don't like that um, bus stop there at all. I'd like it to be moved. We're talking about you know, redoing DART um, yes. in terms of the bus routes. I don't like that station there. I, I did see something in Iowa that was interesting, and I think I shared it with Robert. Maybe I shared it with transportation. But it was the idea of the left turn lane heading west on uh, Richmond, staggering the bar about 30 feet back from the light, and it allows a bus to take a right turn there. Um, but you know, David's smiling. I don't know if he, he likes that idea or not. Maybe I shared it with you. But um, somehow or other, we got to get that bus off of Abrams, and it's either no bus stop or get it around the corner. But it's just it's backing up everything. It's in the way. Or just reverse the loop. Um, help me out with it because it's terrible. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Melanie. Thank you. Uh, all right, moving on, uh, we have uh, Marie, if you want to go ahead and unmute. Hi, um, this will be quick and no questions. I love the hybrid idea. Thank you all so much for rethinking this. Um, it's it just it looks great for for the neighborhood. I live on Richmond, the 5800 block, and um, this would work. This would work. So thank you for all your efforts. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, Marie. Uh, moving next, we have uh, Amy. Go ahead and unmute and give us your comments or questions. Hi, thank you. Um, my question is simply, do you all as the city experts truly endorse this or are there any hesitations that we should know about? Like, do you feel that a Shero for one of the bike lanes truly makes bicyclists safe? Um, or have we given up a little bit of the 100% all the way to safety in order to kind of find a compromise against all these groups and the input? Um, same question for traffic. We now have 36 feet of parking and traffic, but do we have enough cars truly parking in an expert's opinion for that to slow speeds down, which, you know, I think the safety and the speed is probably everyone's ultimate goal. Um, yeah. And so that was my big question. And then second one is just, I only really became involved in this project and aware of it in October at the first meeting. 
um, do did you all gather opinions prior to that? And do you feel like now at the end you're meeting all the expectations of public um, interest in what people had said they wanted to see out of the project at its um, end? That's it. OK, so. You know, ad addressing the first question in terms of. You know, does does the city feel like, you know, we have the ideal perfect option? I, I don't think there is an ideal perfect option in 44 feet of right of 44 feet of curb width. So given the 44 feet of curb width we have, I think the city feels like we have put the best option out there that addresses the most needs so that no one on Richmond is losing anyone and or losing anything and we're not harming anyone on Richmond. Um, we have heard a strong desire for parking, um, very loud and very clear. We've also heard a strong desire for bike lanes, very strong and very clear. Um, folks that bought property on Richmond that have an expectation of having on street parking because that is how they bought their homes. Um, this is an equity issue in some aspects. So we don't want to, again, we, we don't want anyone to lose anything or feel like they're losing anything as part of this project. So we've taken the best of the options that we had to put within 44 feet between curb to curb. Um, And I'm going to apologize, but I completely spaced what your second question was. Um, the second part of the question, and thank you for responding to the first part. I mean, I know that you never get an idea when there are this many um, opinions in the mix and groups to satisfy, but definitely didn't want, you know, I think if people really understood, hey, bicyclists will be unsafe in a Shiro or had more of an education on some of those matters, um, maybe compromise isn't what really gets us to the right solution. So that was the only reason for question one. Question two was um, after having been involved in the project for so long, I assume you guys had original input from people. And do you feel like you're accomplishing all of the, the goals from residents, from the public, from the inception of the project now that you're closing the end and getting into design? I mean, I'll, I'll let Councilman Fluid also address this if you would like, but from from my standpoint, I, I feel like we have addressed the input um, that we've gotten as best we can. I feel like we have addressed um, as many people's concerns as we can, um, as I said, with the 44 feet of pavement with that we have available to us. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump, Councilman, okay. if you don't mind, really quick. No, please, Robert, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Robert Bettis from uh, Public Works. I um, also just want to say, too, that, I mean, we've been talking to uh, a number of the community advocates since last April. So, I mean, so for about a year, uh, I mean, a year today, um, I mean, we, we've been working with the community, trying to get the, the feedback. Um, I will mention that th this project was it started off as a simple uh, mill and overlay or resurfacing project. And, you know, hearing uh, the voices in the um, and the opinions of the community is, is what has led us here today. Um, I have to echo Chris's sentiments as far as um, there, there is no perfect uh, outcome uh, here, given the, the constraints that we have as far as the, the available right of way and pavement. Um, but uh, I really do believe that this is, uh, this captures uh, pretty much all, every, everything that everyone has talked about, narrow lanes, parking on both sides, bike lanes to the best of our ability. Um, the speed tables, uh, the the rapid flashing beacons. I mean, this kind of this really brings together uh, so many different elements. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, we've never done this before, which is why we call it a pilot. Um, but it's going to be awesome once it's built. Thank you. Well, I like hearing that it's going to be awesome. But you know, the thing that got me on this on the on the bike lane is, and it took me a while to get here. The, the idea of a truly protected bike lane. It isn't two, we don't have room for two, but it's a truly protected bike lane with an east-west connector. Um, I wanna see this used. 
I want to see people going from Lakewood over to Greenville and back and forth and and activate the street safely. So yeah, it may be a pilot, but I want this to be successful. And if it is, I think it's a model going forward that we can then say, hey, this parking protected bike lanes work. They make people feel safe and they'll use them. That's something I really want to see. Thank you, sir, for those comments. Uh, and it looks like we're getting close to the close of the meeting, so we'll go ahead and uh, Tommy T, uh, if you would, go ahead and unmute. But I do want to, again, uh, Hytham, if you could put up the contact information, make it clear that if there are any questions that have not been addressed, please email them to myself, to Dia, to Chris, and we will try to address them and as best as we possibly can post-meeting. Hang on, uh, how many questions do we have out there still? Because I'll stay a little long, so this is very important to me to get this right and make sure everybody's been listened to. So is there a bunch? Uh, well, we don't have any specific questions in the chat, but we do have, it looks like, some after Tommy, yeah, we do have several more uh, hands raised. So if you're willing to stay on, sir. Yeah, don't do a hard seven for me. Okay, sounds okay. good. Okay, um, I'm, I'm calling in. I'm Mary McCoy. I live at 6046 Richmond which is at the southwest corner of Skillman in Richmond. And this is a, um, I, I am very much in tune with the goals, but as the person that lives on the corner, um, that right soft turn lane is extremely important to me. Uh, when traffic is heavy, I, I can't get out of my driveway. I can't get in, I can't get out. Um, I block um, westbound traffic. What am I going to do? You speak to equity. I mean, my equity is clearly impacted here. Mary, I don't have a specific answer for you at the second regarding your driveway location. Um, we can look specifically at your specific location and see if there's anything we can do to accommodate. Um, but it sounds to me, if I'm understanding your issue correctly, that basically the traffic backs up it past does. your driveway. Is that, is that what I'm understanding? Yeah. And even if the bump out lane or whatever, I don't completely understand what they mean. But if I could at least, if me, if I could turn out from my driveway, at least nobody else could, but I could. I mean, that would be significant, even if it meant I had to, you know, turn right and go down to Prospect or, you know, whatever. I have. I have to be able to get out of my driveway. Um, Mary, send send me an email if you would, and let us talk offline about your specific situation. Okay. Um, and I'm sorry, but is your email on the flyer that was sent out? Because I'm, I'm calling in. Yeah, you can go ahead and send the email to Ryan, and he will ensure it gets to to myself and Hytham. And yes. That that's my email on the on the flyers that we put out. So if you get it to me, I'll get it okay. to her. Thank you. I will do that. Thank you. Sorry about that, uh, Tommy. If you would go ahead. Okay. Um, can you hear me? All right. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, it looks like the the current proposal is the is the one that was was based on the one that was rejected in the previous vote, where we had you know like parking on one side. I just walked outside a second ago. And there are two cars parked on the street in, in my block. And so it makes me wonder about how serious the parking problem is. Uh, people may, may clamor for, for parking on both sides of the street, but I sure don't see the need. When I walk out five minutes ago and saw two cars in the whole block parked. And so I'm wondering, you know, if, you know about uh, when, when you, in the introduction, you were talking about finalizing the project. Uh, are we going to have another vote between the winning vote for the previous survey and this new one? Or is this 
is this a done deal at this point? And I'll just, I'll re-mute and, and let you respond. So this is uh, Robert Bettis from Public Works. Uh, we don't intend on having a, a secondary vote or another vote. Um, as mentioned, uh, we had two previous surveys uh, in which to seek input uh, from the community. Um, and that definitely helped guide, uh, guide I guess, the, the design to the point that we're at today. Um, so as mentioned, what we're trying to do is trying to, you know, combine previous options, which were shared uh, with the understanding that there's certain things that we don't, we don't want to hurt anybody. We don't want to take parking away from anybody. Um, you know, and, and if it's, you know, if it's one person or if it's a hundred people, I mean, you know, who, who are uh, concerned about the parking, we want to make sure that, that we can address, you know, as many of the issues as possible, uh, which is how we arrived to where we're at today. So um, we really, I mean, we really do want buy-in from the community. Um, as mentioned too, we also don't want to hurt anybody through this process. And while, you know, maybe there's only two cars parked out there, we did hear from, you know, more than one person who was concerned about losing parking uh, on, on the block as part of this project. Yeah, but so, we had a vote. On, we voted yeah, on that. Yes, sir. There was a vote. However, going back to the statistics of the second survey, um, you know, there's a 60-40 split as far as, you know, wanting option B, which is, you know, parking only on one side. But if you go back and look at the vote, <laughs> it's split down the middle because nobody wants to lose the parking. So, I, I mean, as mentioned, we, we took the information as feedback to guide the design, um, which is how we arrived at where we're at today, sir. Well, it seems like if you really want to make the, uh, if parking wasn't the issue on, on having it on both sides fixed, the, the real solution would be to take the, the third option that we're looking at and where, where you have a, uh, you know, a shared bike lane with the auto lane, just, uh, you, you know, take out the parking on that side. And then, and then you have you have bike lanes on both sides of the road. I think it's right. comical. Look at this poor guy in the red shirt. He's you know you could have just as easily drawn a four by four or a delivery truck of any type. That guy is about to get run over. I, I think it's I, it's I don't want to be him. Okay, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to our next uh, hand raised, which is uh, Mr. Nick Mogensen. Hey, um, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hey, I just wanted to say I really appreciate all the work you guys have done on this. I would like to say that as a uh, homeowner on Richmond Ave, um, I selfishly am very happy with the hybrid option because it gives me those narrow lanes gives me the slower traffic, the safety, and uh, I think that's really good. I think my only concern is kind of echoing the last gentleman's. Um, that how many times have you walked down a street in Dallas and you see a guy trying to bike on a car's right of way? You know, technically the bike is supposed to be treated like a vehicle and those guys are swerving around him, they're honking at him. I mean, people are jerks. Uh, I think that if you go with this model, I as a resident on Richmond Avenue, I get what I want, but I wonder about the good of the greater city and people trying to come east to west, you know, bike to Lower Greenville, that sort of thing. Um, so that, you know, it seems like this is kind of a done deal at this point, this is what we're going with. Um, but I would caution, you know, using this as a model because I do think it kind of shortchanges anyone traveling east to west on a bicycle. Thanks. Thank you for your comments, sir. Uh, up next, we I see Mike Brown. Hey guys, can y'all hear me? <clears throat> yes. I'm coming at this from purely a cycling aspect, and I kind of agree with the guy who earlier said something about the guy in the red shirt, is I do love this hybrid model, and but I don't like mixing 30-pound bicycles with 3,000-pound cars, especially when you have these speed tables that are going to be in the road, too. Um, I don't know if they'll have cutouts for them uh, for the cyclists to go through when they're riding in there with the cars if they don't. Um, I can tell you right now, cyclists don't like speed tables. So they won't go, they will not do that. Um, one of the 
things that I wanted to propose is just like the trail is behind the White Rock Lake at the Arboretum, it's basically a bi-directional trail. Why do you not make the bike lane on the right-hand side bi-directional, and then you have all bikes on the right-hand side of the road going both directions? You could easily play with the parking lane width of 7.5 feet, uh, make it seven, and take a foot out of the buffer. That would give you a seven-foot bike lane. I don't know if you have that kind of leeway to do that, but the mixing cars and bicycles just never matches. And you have to think, too, where's all your bicycle traffic really going? It's in the afternoons, the majority of your bicycle traffic is going to the lake, so they would use that Richmond Trail, but every single cyclist is going to turn off of Richmond onto Alderson and get on Belmont and go down to that light because that light turns directly into Lakewood Boulevard, and that's the way they come home. Most of your cyclists, if you see them coming home at night, they're not on Richmond. They're on Belmont. But if you put in a bike lane, I do agree. I think they would use it more on Richmond because they would cut through because it would be safer. But I think a bi-directional bike lane on Richmond, that way you get the, the guy in the red shirt. He goes bye-bye. There's no bikes mixed with cars, and it's just, it's just a lot safer. I do agree with your, your comments that narrow lanes slow down traffic. And we've seen that on Matilda, too. When they redid Matilda, those single lanes and added those bike lanes, the traffic slows down quite a bit. So, I mean, my proposal is just to think about making the bike lane on the right-hand side uh, bi-directional. Because if you really think about it, there's not a ton of bike traffic in this town. It's not like bike traffic is so thick on Richmond that they can't slow down and go around each other real easy with that in that bike lane and the buffer lane. That's it. Mm. Uh, Mr. Brown, our, our original options did have a two-way cycle track option. But again, the issue is that has to be a certain width and it needs to have a buffer. And so once we put that in there, we do not have room for parking on both sides of the road. So that, so, again, it's, it's a matter of so not that, having enough sure. width. So in the red guy in the red shirt, are the speed tables going to be split so the cyclists can ride through them or will the cyclists have to ride over the speed tables? That design detail has not yet that that is a final design detail that hasn't been yet put on plans. Well, if that's if that's the case, I can tell you from a cyclist standpoint, cyclists will not use Richmond going from west to east if the speed tables are there. Okay. They'll just stay on. They'll just stay on Belmont. Mm. Okay. Thank, thank you for that input. We will take that into consideration as as we're doing that final design. Got you. Um, up next, uh, I see David. Got your hand raised. So if you would go ahead, unmute, and make your comments or ask your questions. Sure, not a problem. I just have one uh, one comment. Uh, Mr. Perez, um, I was certainly uh, um, I'm happy uh, to see uh, your um, comment, to hear your comment about uh, how important it is for uh, for the community uh, to be involved um, um, as we move forward. Um, I'd like to ask Mr. Perez and Mr. Blewett to commit to something into the in, in moving into the future in terms of community involvement. There are a lot of decisions that still need to be made: striping, painting. Bump outs where they actually occur, if, if any are added, signage. Um, I would like a commitment from both of you that you'll put together some type of community group that public that public works will bring into the project, so that moving bring into the project at whatever key points you want until the completion of the project. So from this, so that this isn't just simply the last time the community has the ability to have involvement, and then one day we wake up and this is done. So uh, will both of you commit to doing that? Mr. Shen, uh, I will just say that um, at any point during construction or anything, we're always open to comments and we get them all the time. And I don't think that there's ever been a point where we've ignored anybody's uh, comments. Um, so, so, I, 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 I'd have to uh, disagree with you on that. I've had many comments um, um, ignored, uh, but that's neither here nor there. If this right. is just simply formalizing it rather than just simply saying, you know, you can call whenever you want. 
why don't we formalize it, Mr. Uh, Council Member Blewett, Mr. Perez? Why don't you two put together a group? It could be four people, six people, ten people. I don't care, and agree that at certain points, and you can even determine when those points are, that you bring that group in and you allow that group to have input before final decisions are made on signage, striping, crosswalks, uh, um, uh, um, street calming uh, um, locations. David, let me ask you a question. So assuming that um, I think that's a good idea to have a task force of sorts or a working group um, on design elements in the basic, um, do you agree with the hybrid model um, in, in form or what do you think? I I um I I still I, I still a uh, and a proponent am a proponent of uh, of uh, dedicated buffered bike lanes in both directions. I think that this is a compromise. Um, I'd like to see if it works, uh, but I still believe that uh, dedicated buffered bike lanes are the best solution for Richmond for a number of reasons. One being lack of traffic friction. I mean, you know, the comments that were made about by by Tom um, about actual true parking on the street. Um, you know, it's, the, you know, my, my high count is you got 55 cars total. And uh, my count is you have 116 uh, parking spaces on just one side. Uh, your normal usage of, uh, of a supply and demand of parking, you have uh, three times, normally you have three times the supply for the demand. Um, you know, I, when, when we talk about equ equability, equity, um, I don't know that there's anything, any right that there is that, 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 that people have to have parking on any street. And if there is, please share with me and let me know. But David, as I've told you, let's try this. Let's see if it works. I mean, I, 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 think, that, I think that this will be much better for Richmond than um, having um, um, travel lanes that are greater than travel lanes that are required for interstate highways. Let me, let me just answer your question with a political uh, answer um, and an operational answer. You know, for Robert and for Chris, I mean, they have to do things. They've talked about the timeline for design. They have to, if we go forward, and this is the decision, they have to go forward on design. But I will commit to you personally that I will put together a working group and I will meet with you and I will present ideas for these things to them because I don't think it's fair to slow them down. They have work. It's not a matter. It, the intent is not to slow them down, yeah. but I do think the direct involvement of citizens with the people who are actually making decisions. There's a difference between being able to sit down and ask questions and have that being interpreted. There's that, that's different from being able to have actual constructive dialogue, and that's what I'm asking for. Is I'm asking for a commitment that you'll allow citizens to have actual constructive dialogue. And I'm not trying to slow the process down. And I'm not saying that this is a weekly event. You know, you decide, is it three times? Is it four times? Is it two times? I don't care. Yeah, but you know, decide whether it's gonna be four, six or eight people. I don't yeah. care. All I'm saying Mr. is David, allow the public to be involved in the decisions. Mr. Shen, Mark, I-, I Robert, Robert, let me you... answer this real quick. Yes, sir. Um, David, as of today, you know, I am your representative. And my job, is to make sure that your voice is heard. I promise you I will do that. I don't think that it's fair when Robert and Chris have to go forward and do their work. So now I don't know what Robert was going to say. If, if I convene a working group on some of the design elements that you're talking about, and I am the point of contact back to public works, that's how I would prefer it. If Robert is willing to sit in on this working group, if that doesn't slow him or Chris down on what they're trying to do, that's their decision. But I got to be very sensitive here on how we do this. Robert, what's your comment? Councilman and, and uh, Mr. Shen, uh, what I was going to recommend is that uh, as we hit major milestones, like once we have, you know, conceptual as we have here, going forward to something down on paper, I mean, we can come back and share it uh, with the community. Um, however, I, I don't want it to get into a, um, I guess get into, um, that's the right word, I guess the right phrase. Uh, I want I want the input from the community because yes you know what uh, we we all have to you know to work with what we do. Um, however, I mean if it gets down to I want to move this to this location and that to the, that location, and I've come up with my own design. Um, I mean that that's kind of where we're going to have to draw the line. But what I will commit to you is that you know we we will be open uh, and available to meet uh, with you know a community working group. Uh, to discuss certain milestones uh, through construction. 
I'll even, I'll even go a step further. I mean, if this is helpful to have these type of Zoom oriented community meetings, I'll host more of them along the way. But as long as we can have dialogue and aren't limited to 60 seconds, that's great. But 60 seconds doesn't allow for dialogue, quite honestly. And again, I mean, the intent here is not to slow it down. But Mr. Prez, I can I can I can I can talk about a number of projects where community involvement in citizens comments have actually made things better and safer that have been missed by both public works, by the water department, by utilities. That's all I'm asking is for the ability to be able to, to come in and 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 ask questions and give you comments and suggestions. And, now, if, and, and, and if you'll commit to that, that's great. I appreciate that. And Mr. And, and Council Member Blewett, the idea of setting up a task force, your suggestion, I think is a great one and I look forward to that. I, I appreciate that. We've had good dialogue here and we did try and do it to a minute because there were so many people. But I, I, understand. Know a lot of you, I know you and Melanie and others have put years, if not decades into what this road's gonna look like. And, and so I'm happy to continue this conversation, but um, we we do, I really want this project to go. I don't want this thing to sit for another year or two as we try and study it to death. I, this is not a matter of studying it to death. This is a matter of allowing the community to have input. For, for example, you know, there's been no delineation of signage. There's been um, no delineation, true, true delineation of, of how the street will paint. Mr. Shin, we will make sure that we work with the community moving forward. Uh, as we reach those milestones, as I've mentioned, so um, and, and I, I we can work. Total transparency, easy deal. Yes, sir. Okay, so I I, I do have when when we talk about points of clarity. Um, um, if you could please, could you bring up the traffic calming slide? Um, locations for traffic calming. Thank you, uh, Chris. I'm just I'm curious uh, uh, about a location. You show you show on the the traffic calming elements. You show a speed table at the intersection of of uh, Skillman and Richmond. But you had mentioned you had stated that there was your speed table is going to be at, at Empire in Richmond. Which is it? I don't believe I show anything at Skillman and Richmond, sir. Um, no, it no, is sorry, not Skillman and Richmond, Cecile and Richmond. You show a speed table in your comments before when you were talking about where um, um, speed tables were going to be were going to be located. You stated that it was going to be Empire and Richmond. It's just a point of clarification. I am so sorry. You are right. I did say Empire, and I meant Cecile. I am so sorry. Very good. My apologies. Well, one other, one other quick question point in terms of, of, of clarification. Um, if you could bring up the uh, the the slide that's the uh, the Richmond Abrams um, um, configuration, the transfer. I'm sorry. The, yeah, the the Abrams Richmond. There you go. Um, you 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 show that the uh, that the protected lane is going to be on the north side. Is that correct? As, as I indicated, we still have to design this. However, city staff right now is leaning towards putting that dedicated bike lane on the south side because of the fact that there are less driveways on that south side. And right now it appears to be less drainage impact, but that is something that we need to work out over the next month or two as we're doing this final design. Okay, um, so uh, um, is there any way that citizens can be involved in, in that or is that simply an engineering decision? You know, and I, and I and I and I ask that because I also know that on the south side, you have um, um, you have a, you have a much higher I issue, especially at that intersection, with the apartment complex that's at Alderson and uh, and Richmond in in terms of traffic volumes and parking needs. And as I said, um, David, that is something that we're looking at right now. Um, and yes, we do welcome input as we have all through this process over the last year. Okay, Chris. At what point in time um, um, should um, um, uh, is input on that decision um, valuable to you? Right now, because that is one of the first decisions that we need to make before we can move forward with the design: is which side of the road this dedicated bike lane is going to go on. Okay, so so how do we enter into a conversation that does not uh, um, impede this, the, uh, the the schedule of your of your work? Because again, I mean, I look at it. I mean, I think that uh, um, it it should be an engineering decision. Um, I know that um, the first um, the, the the one of the first designs that you you had in terms of of bike lanes 
uh, you, you, from an engineering uh, standpoint, you stated that you put it on the north side because of engineering. Um, you know, so, so it's, it's just, a, it's, it's confusing to me. You know, that, and, I, and, and I, again, I look at the apartment, especially the apartment complex on the south side at, at Alderson and, um, and Richmond, and I look at the volume of traffic that comes in and out of that um, and that parks in front of it. You know, so, so Ms. Again, how, how does that affect the decision? Mr. You know, Shen, the Mr. Shen of, I, of, of driveways. Mr. Shen, if I could, sir, um, it is going to be an engineering decision. Uh, however, we do want to hear the impact or the input from the community. So what I'd recommend is that we put together that task force that was uh, suggested by Councilman Blue as soon as possible, so that way we can get to you know a, a point where we can actually speak about it intelligently, uh, as we you know look at it from an engineering standpoint as well. Um, I mean, Mr. President, I'd, I'd appreciate that. I know that uh, that um, that Chris is under a time constraint on that design, so I'm assuming that uh, Councilmember Blue that that uh, task force that working group will be put together pretty quickly. Yes, and, you know, and we will work know, with David, it. Uh, David, I give you credit, ABC. And uh, yes, to do this, we need to do it quickly. Thank you. And uh, I don't see another hand raised, but I did see a question in the chat that I think- I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute, but I, I, um, I see Melanie's hands up again. I'd suggest you talk, talk to her. I don't so. know if those hands ever went down from the first round. <laughs> yeah, there are some some leftover hands there, and we're, we we are going to raise try. your hand if you're on the phone conversation. Uh, that you don't, unfortunately. But since you are uh, already unmuted, sir, go ahead and give us your comments as well, your questions. Thank you. This this is Seth Smith. I'm in the 6200 block of Richmond, and I am on the south side. I do prefer for the bike lane to be on the north side, and as the gentleman was just saying about Belmont about how bi bicyclists are using that lane, you know, that is on that side where they can filter off and that to take uh, Lakewood Boulevard into Lakewood. I uh, definitely like the hybrid system where we still have parking on both sides. In the area that I live on Richmond, and I know it sounds like it varies from wherever you are on Richmond, uh, the street parking is very vital. And that would have been a deal breaker when I bought my home if I wasn't allowed to utilize parking. I understand parking belongs to everyone, but we have, you know, not just large duplexes there, but even garage apartments, which makes them triplexes and so forth, where they just have their own driveway and there's no alley uh, relief where they can pull out that way and so forth. Anyway, I just want to say I think you guys are doing a great job. It's a very well-run meeting, and I really enjoy the hybrid aspect of it, and I definitely want to keep parking on both sides. And my preference is that the bike lane would go to the north side. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all's time tonight. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your comments. Um, and then I think we'll go ahead. Um, Hayden, we'll have you be the last comment. But first, before you, uh, Courtney Davis, did we? Did you have your hand raised and we missed you? Uh, no, I just had a quick question. What does protected bike lane mean? Is it simply striping or will there be concrete or rubber? Or what, what does protected bike lane mean? In, in this case, ma'am, um, as we call parking protected, if, if you can look at this graphic and thank you, Hytham. Basically, as Hytham is circling the car right here, what this means is that the parking lane that he's circling is between the bike lane, which is at the curb, and the travel lane. So we protected the bike lane with the parking lane. So the bicyclists are protected from being adjacent to the parking lane by the bike by the um, parking lane. Right. So on the ground, will it simply be striping, or will there be concrete or rubber barricade like barriers? We are still discussing if we are going to put down um, what are called armadillos on that bike lane. And the reason we're discussing it is because there are quite a few driveways along Richmond. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those armadillos can be more of an impediment when we have a lot of driveways. So we're going to have to look at that as part of the design to see if the armadillos are going to work in this design or not. Okay. And, and what armadillos are, if you if you don't know, they're basically raised plastic or excuse me, raised um, rubber pavement markers, essentially. 
Yeah, and unless engineering is against it, I'm, I'm, I think that's a good delineator between the uh, parking lane and the bike lane. So we'll see what engineering says, but I like that. Yeah, it's just a matter. We just need to look at the spacing of the driveways, sir, to make sure that um, they'll be effective. Right. right. Lots of driveways. So I appreciate you looking at that. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Courtney. And then uh, Hayden, uh, we'll go ahead and let you be the last comment because I see we're reaching 730 here, so uh, we'll need to close it out soon. But go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, so my name is Hayden Sage. I live on Belmont. I'm not in Richmond, but I'm also, uh, I, my husband and I have researched this neighborhood thoroughly. And Richmond is part of the Belmont addition to the city of Dallas. So it's part of our neighborhood. And what happens on Richmond impacts us. So what I gotta say is I am also a biker. I go down to the lake every time. And I was listening to Michael Brown's comments about how we really just go down to Belmont to Lakewood to the lake. Personally, I know the money's there for Richmond. I know we gotta do something about it. I know we gotta calm traffic, but I would never use Richmond as a biker ever. I just go down Belmont and it's just painted on the middle of the street and there's nothing wrong with it. So while we want to all add more bike lanes, which is great, the reality is that those lanes are gonna be fairly used. The majority of the bikers that I know use Belmont and that's where the bikes go. It's on Belmont to and from the lake connected to Matilda, going out to Mockingbird and out to the Mockingbird Bridge and onto the trail. So. I don't want to affect the, I've talked to many residents in Richmond and they do want their parking. So that's priority. Parking must be uh, a priority for everybody on Richmond. And all I want to say is, you know, there's nothing wrong with using Belmont. Just come on and we're all neighbors. Just use Belmont going down to the lake. There's really not a need for bike lanes on Richmond. And that's just my only opinion. Thank you Thank for you, those uh, comments. So Ryan, are we done then? No other comments right now? Uh, well, I do see some other questions in uh, that are in the chat window. And I do I do think this could be addressed because we have had several residents bring this up both in emails to me and just also conversations. Uh, talks about a median. Would a median work? And if not within the scope of this project, why not? I, I I have heard a lot of questions from folks about that. Yeah. Um, I'd like to, well, if you're looking for other questions, let me just make a quick comment on this. The ideas of medians, expanding sidewalks, I can tell you behind the scenes, guys, I've looked at this every which way you can. And it's just, we just don't have enough width to make this thing perfect. And I just want you to know that whether it's Robert or whether it's Chris or me or some of the other stakeholders that are on Richmond who really are passionate about this road, we've looked at this every possible way. Um, and it, if to do other structural things involves years of delay, potential new bonds, all kinds of things. And quite frankly, this thing started out as, like I said, resurfacing and slowing it, making it safer. Um, the great Lee Kleinman, I laugh about that. He's termed out, so he's gone. But he talks all the time on council about not letting the perfect be the enemy of the good. And we're doing good here, guys. This isn't perfect, um, but it's better. And we can certainly add design elements, um, signage, where the speed tables look. I like uh, Mike Brown's talking about how the bicycles could have um, a break in the speed table. So I'll be looking at that as well, because I, I hear him loud and clear. I want this road used. And I do think outside of the Shero guy looking like he's going to get run over, if we successfully slow this road down, that will be less of a problem. The goal is slowing the road down, guys. That's the goal. Um, with that, I will say, again, my name is David Blewett. My email is very simple. You know, I'll, I'll, it's david.blewett at dallascityhall.com. I know they're looking for input um, on this project, but I am too. Um, I really want people to understand that this is a good option for us and we'll try and tighten it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I want to hear from you. Um, Ryan, what else you got? Robert, what else you got? Chris, what else you got? Uh, yeah, and I will say for 
for folks who did uh, have some questions in the comment section, I will be copying the comments from that and sending them off to our folks. So we we, we do see them and we will uh, if we will try to answer them within a timely manner as best we can. Chris, and, we done? Uh, yeah, just really quick. Uh, just thank you everybody for your input and getting us to this point. I know it's been, like I said, a year in the making. Um, so thank you all. and. Looking forward to the continued uh, partnership moving forward. Thanks. Yes. Chris? No, I, I just wanted to thank everyone. I wanted to thank um, you, Councilmember Blewett, for being so involved with this project and um, thank the community for their input. You know, thank city staff um, for all the work they have done on this project because there has been a lot of it done. So I just appreciate everyone's um, input and comments and sticking with us through this process. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Um, I guess if I'm the last one, then I'll just say thank you all for coming here tonight. Thank you for your passion. It actually is hard. It's hard to get here. There's never consensus on these things, but it helps me to understand what y'all are thinking. So thank you for being here. And um, Chris, Robert, Ryan, I appreciate your effort on this. And say goodnight, Gracie. Thank you so much. Oh, you don't know what to say. You're supposed to say goodnight, Gracie. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, all. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Okay, let me go ahead and stop the recording. Now, do you have